Before we begin tonight, I would like to offer our condolences to Councilman Buddy Baker and his family. They lost a wife, a mother, and a sister early this morning, Audrey Baker. She was a very gracious and loving and courageous lady, and she will be terribly missed. Tonight's invocation is being offered by Christy Shea Moore of the Bellevue Presbyterian Church. She is a guest of Council Member Charlie Tigert. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Good evening. Let us bow our heads together for a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day that you've made. We know, Lord, that you rain down your generosity and your goodness upon us each and every day. We thank you today for the rain that you have sent that waters our earth. And we thank you, God, for your call to serve. And we ask that you be with us tonight, be with your council men and women as they seek to serve your people and to serve this community that you have entrusted to us. We thank you, God, that we are created in your image and that we are created to be fair and to be just and to be good. And so we pray that you will be with your people tonight and that your spirit will guide the councilmen and women in their decisions. And Lord, that all that we do would be pleasing to you in your sight. We pray all of these things in your good, strong name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of the members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for approval of the adoption of our minutes from November 1st? And so, without objection, the minutes stand approved. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. Councilman Tiger. you are recognized. Uh, that's okay. I wanted to introduce my wife, but she and Reverend Moore had a... Uh, uh, previous engagement so they uh, ran out uh, we don't get to see Judy here often you may have caught her uh, leaving but uh, the reason she said was that if she wanted to hear arguments and debate she would have kept me at home with her so <laughs> uh, we have one presentation tonight uh, council member Stein and council member Weiner <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to call up Terry Simon. You coming back? Come. Terry is a, a patient advocate and a lung cancer patient. And as November has been declared Lung Cancer Month in the state of Tennessee, Lung Cancer Awareness Month in the state of Tennessee, the Metro Council Resolution RS 2011-71 Whereas lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in both men and women across Tennessee and the United States, according to the American Cancer Society, and whereas former smokers and people who have never smoked comprise the majority of new lung cancer cases each year, and whereas early lung cancer diagnosis and management protocols do exist, yet have not been embraced as the standard of care, and whereas, although some lung cancer is not yet preventable, education on the dangers of smoking, smoking avoidance, secondhand smoke, and decreased exposure to radon can reduce the incidence of lung cancer, especially in children, and physical examinations can help to detect the cancer at earlier, less dangerous stages. Whereas it's fitting and proper that the Metro Council recognizes November 2011 as Lung Cancer Awareness Month in Nashville, we urge all citizens of this great city to do all we can to increase the awareness and learn the risks and symptoms of this horrible disease. Just a personal note, Terry's been a friend of mine for years. Our kids have grown up together. Terry's never smoked a day in her life, and she is a lung cancer patient. I'd like to turn the floor over to Terry. 
I am delighted, although that's an obviously dubious word to use when you're talking about lung cancer, to be in your presence today to let you know that Nashville in particular can be very proud that we have in our own city world-renowned researchers and physicians who work on this terrible problem of lung cancer. They include researchers and doctors at Sarah Cannon um, Research Center Institute, and we have doctors from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Um, some of those doctors are one of mine, Dr. Leora Horn, Dr. Pierre Massion, Dr. David Carbone, and Dr. David Spiegel. Uh, lung cancer has a terrible stigma. Everybody thinks it's a smoker's illness and that bears with it then some sort of responsibility for those of us who end up with this disease. As of right now, there's not a good clinical diagnostic tool to use and if there's one that's developed, likely it will go to those in high risk categories first and that would still continue to leave people like me in the dark. Fortunately, we have opportunities like this to educate the public and to make people aware. And so it is an honor to be here in front of all of you to present to Nashville Metro Council this proclamation from Governor Haslam's office declaring November Tennessee Lung Cancer Awareness Month. We're now at the point on our agenda for the election of General Sessions Judge to uh, fill a vac vacancy expiring August the 31st, 2012. Uh, I will call each candidate's name and you will have five minutes to speak. Uh, Rachel Bell. While she's coming up, I will tell you that two of the candidates have withdrawn, Larry Hoover and Andre Ellen Lee. Hello, my name is Kaki Friscus Warren. I'm a proud resident of Peter Westerholm's district and live at 1719 Holly Street. And I'm here to introduce you to Rachel Bell. It is my honor to tell you about Rachel because I've known her since she was considerably shorter than she is today, as we've been members of the same worship community for 25 years. And I've watched Rachel grow from a leader on the basketball court to being a leader in the Nashville community. She serves on the Nashville um, Hands-On Nashville Board and the Disciple Village Board. But you have to wonder why I would nominate her. Um, and so I want you to know a little bit about her character. Um, I know that Rachel is a person who treats all people with respect regardless of their stature. And when I think about Leon Rubin and what a fine man he was, I can see Rachel sitting in his chair. I've also seen her in discernment. Now I'm sure all of your congregations are perfect in every way and that you learn, live in peace with humanity while you're in your worshiping community, but ours is not quite so perfect. And we find ourselves in pickles from time to time. And Rachel is able, when we're trying to discern the next right thing to do, to ask a question, to listen, to seek information so we can make wise decisions. And I think that is the quality of a good judge. But most of all, it's because I know Rachel has heard the words justice, mercy, and kindness from birth. So I give you my sister, a proven community leader, and a willing servant, Rachel Bell. Thank you, Kaki. I really do appreciate that. It's such a pleasure to know that individuals will watch you grow up and are willing to advocate for you and be there when you need them. So I really do appreciate that, Kaki. As Kaki has told you, I am committed to serving the city of Nashville. I'm also committed to serving the greater county of Davidson County. As a young child, I have been a proven leader since the age of 13, where I was working with the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital as a children's youth ambassador for the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. I was diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 13 and had to overcome some of those obstacles at that time and during that time the doctors told me you're not gonna be able to play basketball anymore and so at that time at a young age I learned that in order to overcome obstacles you have to make sure that you're prepared you're willing to manage and you're willing to do the things that are necessary to overcome those situations so much so that they did ask me to be the youth ambassador for the Children's Hospital I know today that you're having to make a difficult decision in selecting the next appointing the next judge for 
General Sessions Court. And I know some of you have already made your decisions. I also know that some of you are thinking about making your decisions here today. I've talked to a number of you, and some of you have told me that I'm a good candidate, but maybe I've called you too late. I want you to know that I really do appreciate your time. I really do appreciate your willingness to review the applicants, to review their resumes, and to make sure that the person that you select is qualified. I'm willing to serve the city of Nashville, and as Kaki mentioned, I have served on the board of Hands on Nashville, the Disciples Village, women, um, golfers recognizing opportunities for women. I've also served on the Kaplan Career Institute as an advisory board member. I've also served for the Di Disciples Village, and I've also a member and serving as a board member for Women in Numbers and various other organizations here in the city. I'm also willing to aid and assist our youth in pursuing their dreams in pursuit for higher education. A couple of years ago, I've committed myself to starting two scholarships, one for individuals that are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and another scholarship for an individual that has lived in North Nashville for more than two years. I'm very committed to their success and their pursuit for higher education. And last year, I was happy to be able to give them laptops and also to give them enough money to take care of their first semester of books. I'm a partner with my law firm of Bell and Kinslow, which has two offices, one located in North Nashville and the other located in West Nashville. And one of my greatest accomplishments of starting a firm is the ability to create jobs during this time of economic despair and why people are still trying to search for jobs. I've been able to create jobs in two of my offices in which we're able to make sure that those individuals are able to take care of their families and their homes. I've also been very prideful of being able to assist individuals and represent persons from all different walks of life and assist them through navigating through difficult matters. Over the course of my career, I've handled cases, several different cases across the state of Tennessee, all of which were within the federal court, bankruptcy court, circuit court, chancery court, juvenile court, and general sessions court. General sessions court is the people's court, and I'm a people person, and I'm willing to do exactly what Kaki says, is to render justice, to be fair, to take the time to listen, and to take the opportunity to work with people. You may ask yourself, why Rachel? I'm a qualified lawyer who, is ex who has helped over 500 clients over the course of several years, and I'm willing to serve the, comu the community of Nashville, and I appreciate your vote today, and if you would give me the time to let you know more about me and seek your appointment here today. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, John P. Brown III. Good evening. With the passing of Judge Leon Rubin uh, several months ago, Nashville lost not only one of its best judges, but one of its finest citizens. Judge Rubin, who was appointed out of this body in 1981, served Nashville with distinguished, with dignity and provided justice in his courts for over 30 years. Based upon that impact on the front lines of our judicial system in the General Sessions Court, where most people who find themselves within the legal process will find themselves in General Sessions Court, it's important to remember that how important your decision is tonight and how important uh, the impact and long-lasting impact that your decision will have. I want to give special thanks to some people who are here with me tonight. Uh, my wife, Cindy Chapel, who's a practicing attorney, here in Nashville also uh, has supported me and has sacrificed uh, a lot of y'all know being uh, public servants and 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 having run uh, political races and that sort of thing uh, your spouses are often uh, the ones that are sacrificing the most in your family and I just want to give special thanks to her I also want to give special thanks to the members of the National Bar Association. I was extremely humbled and honored uh, to receive the endorsement of either highly recommended or recommended of 75% of those people uh, rec who offered an opinion on me. Uh, over 375 lawyers said that I was the right person for this position. I want to give special thanks also to my esteemed colleague, Jonathan Cole, past member, past president of the National Bar Association who uh, was gracious enough to nominate me for this position. Also with me tonight is my father, uh, former General Sessions Judge John P. Brown, who I believe Nashville owes a, uh, a great deal of uh, thanks for his service 
He's been an example for me in public service since I was very young, uh, not only in his 24 years of serving Nashville as a General Sessions judge, but also uh, had more recently sitting for Judge Leon Rubin uh, during his protracted illness this year and since his death. I also want to uh, thank the members of the leadership Donaldson Hermitage uh, class of 2012, many of whom are here tonight in support of me. Uh, I want to thank my law partners, David Kennedy Jr. and Rhett Chandler and my staff, Linda and Julie, who have supported me in this process. Uh, and I also want to thank each of you. I've truly enjoyed this process of, of getting to know many of the council members better and meeting some of you for the first time and getting to know you. Uh, however, after much deliberation and thought and uh, after having spoken to all of you, I've come to determination that now is not my time to serve uh, in this capacity. It is time to devote myself to my law practice at Kennedy and Brown and Donaldson and, and to my other civic pursuits. I want to thank all of you for your time in this process, your careful consideration of all the candidates. I know it's a difficult decision that you have tonight. Uh, I want to thank you again for, for meeting with me, talking with me, uh, looking over my application, and uh, thanks again for your consideration. I want to especially uh, thank Mr. Bruce Stanley, uh, councilman from the 14th District, who offered to speak on my behalf tonight. Uh, Thanks again for all of your time and good luck in your decision. Thank you. Thank you. Tremeca D. Doss. Mr. Henderson, I'll ask that you please keep time for me. I've got five minutes. Thank you. Madam Vice Mayor, and may it please this council. My name is Tremeka D. Doss, and upon the nomination of members of the Nashville community, I seek appointment to the position of General Sessions Judge. I was prepared to come here and spend five whole minutes talking about all of my qualifications. I'm a proud Nashville native. I graduated from MLK Magnet High School for the Health Sciences and Engineering early. I was admitted to Tennessee State University, from which I graduated summa cum laude early. And I was admitted to Vanderbilt Law School, earning my JD and my law license all by the age of 23. I was prepared to tell you all about how I clerked for the Honorable Monty D. Watkins as the first law clerk of Division 5 of Davidson County Criminal Court, and that I heard hundreds of appeals as a hearing officer for the Tennessee Department of Human Services, was specially trained in high volume administrative law by the National Judicial College, and that I am currently the employment law attorney for the Tennessee Department of Transportation, one of the state's largest agencies. But I doubt you all want to hear that tonight. Besides, you've already read that in my application packet. I'd rather take this time to tell you why. For I realize that this appointment process is not so much about the qualifications and the connections of the nominee, but rather this process is about the fulfillment of a significant responsibility to the people of Nashville. When the people of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County come to General Sessions Court, they do so seeking justice, fairness, and reciprocity. They demand, as the law demands, a neutral tribunal, a just decision maker, and I can promise that I will be that fair, neutral, and just decision maker as the law and our citizens demand. The good people of our city expect service, timeliness, patience from their judges. They rightfully expect to be treated with respect and dignity during the court process. A judge who, like them, is a part of the community. A judge who was known by the community at large, not just her profession or by just her district or by those of her socioeconomic status, but the good people of Nashville want equal protection under the law, whether they are homeless living on the street or living on an estate in Del Mead. I can promise that I will make decisions based upon the law as that justice requires. I freely confess I'm not a politician. My career and training are in the law, but nevertheless, I am an attorney. I am a very good attorney. 
and I'm a very committed public servant. If given this opportunity, I believe I will prove to be a great General Sessions judge. And so my appeal is submitted to you, along with my promise that I will be fair, uphold the law, without fear or favor, with justice for all, and malice toward none. And so I thank you for allowing me to participate in this process. But I know I've kept you in suspense with all these brightly colored stickers here. And these stickers and numbers are being worn by some of your constituents here this evening who have supported me throughout this process. These numbers correspond to your districts. For example, I live in District 34, Councilman Todd's district. These are your constituents who have felt strongly enough about this process that they called you about it, visited you about it, wrote you about it, and they're here tonight to witness the result. And now for what I believe is the most important part of my appearance tonight, I want to say thank you. I want to recognize all the individuals and the organizations who came out this evening, who supported me through this process, my mother and my father, who have made that sacrifice. I'm their only child, and they struggled about whether or not to send their baby out here tonight to do this. <laughs> I want to thank the Elks, uh, Spencer Jackson Temple 763, the Pride of Tennessee number 1102 members who are here tonight. I won their oratorical contest back in 1997. Many of the national winners you may recognize, Thurgood Marshall, Oprah Winfrey, and Dr. Dorothy Height, uh, etc. Also, Mr. Jermaine Scales and the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, hold your hand up if you got a sticker on. Mr. Bill Henderson is here. Uh, Miss, Miss Yvonne Joyce. Mr. Williams, Mr. Pasco with my family, and everyone else who took time, and I see Mr. Moore too, who took time to be here this evening. Also, all the attorneys, Mr. Richard Jackson, my mentor. I told him when I was three I was going to practice law, and I did it. I can't say thank you enough to my family. And when I say my family, I mean everybody in Nashville. My family and my friends, you raised me, you loved me, you taught me, you mentored me, you advised me, you backed me up, and you had my back. Thank you. Blake Freeman. Thank you. Councilman Jernigan. <coughs> Uh, I rise tonight to nominate, without reservation, uh, Mr. Blake Freeman. Uh, I've known Blake for many years, both professionally and personally. And over those years, he has earned uh, my highest of accolades. And if given the opportunity to serve, uh, he will do so with integrity. He will do so honestly. He will be firm. He will be fair. I think more importantly, and I think Blake would share this with me, he will guarantee that if you're a citizen of Davidson County, when you go into that courtroom, that he will preserve your due process rights. Whether it's a civil matter, whether it's a criminal matter, I'm confident that he will uphold the Metro Charter, the Constitution of Tennessee, and the Constitution of the United States of America. So I hope you will vote with me tonight for my friend, Blake Freeman, and I reserve, yield the floor to you. Thank you, Councilman Jernigan. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, Madam Vice Mayor, I'm Blake Freeman, and I'm asking for your consideration and your vote tonight. Um, I have reached out to each of you in the last few weeks, and for those of you who I was not able to speak with, I would like to take a few minutes to tell you about myself. I graduated from Metro Schools, I attended MTSU and the Nashville School of Law. I graduated from there in 1984 and passed the bar that year. My law practice for the last 27 years has been primarily General Sessions Court. In reviewing the last five years of criminal court cases in Davidson County, I was listed as attorney of record on 32 pages, 1,100 cases in five years. I wouldn't have done the 27 or else I'd have had a green issue with the, so many papers. The um, separate docket shows 300 General Sessions civil cases, 800 circuit court matters, and thousands of listings on the, as attorney of record on the Middle Tennessee mental health docket. I've set as special judge 
for every Davidson County General Sessions judge since 1984. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want someone who, with the experience and the knowledge in all facets of General Sessions, who has the patience and temperament to listen, and I promise to be fair, just, and courteous to all people, then I ask you to reflect on my knowledge and qualifications. Allow me the honor of your vote. I also want to take one special little bit of time to thank Councilman Buddy Baker. I hope Nashville realizes your commitment to the city, Mr. Baker. I, I think we all will miss your, um, your wife. Um, Michael F. Jamison. Thank you, Madam, Madam Vice Mayor. I yield to Council Member at Large Jerry Maynard for 60 Councilman seconds. Councilman Maynard. Thank you, Vice Mayor. To those who are here, uh, I rise to nominate Mike Jamison, who is not only a friend but a former colleague here on the council. Now, there are so many candidates that are running that are qualified to be judge, who are also friends of mine and who we respect tremendously. In my last 30 seconds, I just want to remind those of us who had the opportunity to serve with Mike and to present to those who did not have the opportunity that Mike came here every day prepared. He came because he believed in the city and its greatness. He took his job seriously. And undoubtedly, I believe that he is one of the finest councilmen ever to serve in this chamber. Because of that, he has a record of service of dignity, of being prepared, being fair. To those who are undecided, let me remind you that Mike was a stalwart for equality and fairness here in this chamber. He has a record, and I believe based on that record, he will be one of the finest judges to sit on the bench in general services. I hope you will vote for Mike Jamison. Members of the council, I seek your vote tonight for appointment as general sessions judge. And after weeks of speaking and meeting with you, now comes the time for me to say how I would expect you, in all fairness, to judge me in the execution of the duties as judge. I expect first to be held accountable for my judgments upon criminal defendants. General Sessions is the court where those who have made their first mistakes in life often find themselves. And I am among those who have made just such mistakes. And in fact, if another candidate, Rosemary Sexton, wasn't always so nice to me, she would tell you herself of a brief episode in my teenage years when one night I put 250 campaign yard signs in her yard with a few rolls of uh, toilet paper. <laughs> but there have been greater mistakes on my part. Members of my own family have broken the law, served time, and struggled with life afterward. Now, punishment for crime should be met with swift, certain, and just punishment. But we lose an opportunity if individuals who make mistakes are led to believe that they now have an inexorable stain on their souls. People who've made mistakes can forever re resign themselves to a lesser life, or they can persevere, redeem themselves in the eyes of the law, and contribute again. And the court system can either hinder or aid in that redemption. And I ask to be judged first on the promise to you that this court, this court, won't extinguish the self-worth of those who've made mistakes, but will firmly correct them and then allow a path to improvement. Second, how well did I apply the lessons learned in this court and in this body and in this chamber Specifically, did I reach out to communities and neighborhood associations, attend their meetings to discuss how to more effectively address codes problems or crime deterrence? Did I conduct trials in area high schools to reach out to the young men and women in the community? And most importantly, did I remember the needs of the disadvantaged when making decisions? Because it was my experience in this chamber that highlighted the sanctity the sanctity of a place where regardless of your status or legal resources, you could always expect justice. Thirdly and lastly, did I strive for efficiency? 
While the General Sessions Courts should be enormously proud of their technological advancements, I ask to be judged on the relentless pursuit of additional technologies that facilitate court hearings for everyone. These days we can be advised of school closings, traffic conditions, weather reports instantly on our cell phones. As technologies progress and allow us to advise litigants and witnesses of their precise court appearance time, judge me on the insistence that we implement them to expedite the court experience for everyone. I seek general session seat for the same reason that I, and perhaps you, ran for counsel, to make a difference through small, perhaps small steps, one at a time, by listening carefully and representing thoughtfully what we hope to become as a city. And I ask for your vote. Thank you. Linda Jones. I'll yield the floor to Councilman Potts. As many of you know, I'll be voting for Ms. Jones this evening. She's a leader, highly qualified, and has proven through her work in the community that she cares about people. I kindly ask that you consider Linda as you vote this evening. Thank you. My name is Linda Jones, and I've been practicing law in Nashville for 20 years. And the best way to sum up my legal career in one sentence is that I have represented Davids versus Goliaths. And it doesn't matter if the Goliath is a bank, is a mortgage company, or is the federal government. I have taken them all on. Why? Because I believe it's very important that David's voice be heard in the courtroom. Now, you have seen my resume. And you have seen the accolades that I have received from my colleagues. In 2009, I received the Best of the Bar recognition in the Nashville Business Journal. In 2010, I received a Mid-South Super Lawyers Award, which is only awarded to 5% of the lawyers in the nation. I received several 300 votes in the bar poll from friends who support me. And one of the things I am most proud of that is not from lawyers is a, an award from the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill for my advocacy work. Now when I think of Judge Rubin, whom we're all uh, missing tonight, who served this county for 31 years, I think of a man who served with conviction. He balanced compassion with justice. And that is extremely important. And when Judge Rubin got upon the bench, he stayed there for 31 years in one place, General Sessions Court, which is what I would aspire to do if you nominate me tonight and if the voters of Davidson County see fit to allow me to remain there to serve the county. And my desire is to serve the entire county, from Bellevue to North Nashville to South Nashville, Antioch, Madison, Goodlettsville, you name it. I have I am also an alumni of 2011 Leadership Donaldson Hermitage, and my good friend Matt Fisher is here to support me tonight from Donaldson. I have ties all over this county deep in the community, and I have been very humbled, very grateful for the support of individuals in each of your districts, and I do have supporters in each of your districts. I do appreciate the time that you all have given to me to talk with me, to consider voting for me tonight, and I do understand, I really do, I know that you've been torn about this decision. I know it's been hard, and the voters of your districts trusted you to make this decision, and I trust you as well. I know you will do the right thing for all of Davidson County. And some of you have even told me, you've looked at me in the eye and said, Linda, I don't think I'm qualified to select who's a General Sessions judge. I'm not a lawyer. What do I do? And, and quite honestly, I say you are qualified. You are good people that the people of your district entrusted to make decisions on their behalf. You are leaders of your district. So please, trust yourself. I trust you. I know you'll do the right thing tonight. Having held public office wasn't and shouldn't be a sole barometer for whether or not you have a commitment to public service. So I want to tell you a little bit about the faces and the people of General Sessions Court, the faces and the people that I've represented over the last 20 years. General Sessions Court is about 
a 55-year-old man, who some of you know who's from a very prominent family here in town, who was wrongfully accused one night in his own home with his weapon, he had a TBI carry permit, his stepdaughter has struggled with abuse issues, and she was bringing the wrong elements home. He had a 13-year-old child at home that he needed to protect and wanted to keep the drugs and the alcohol away. And so he got out his gun and he asked the person to leave. And yet, when the police arrived at his home, they arrested him and charged him with aggravated assault. That single case is probably one of the most rewarding cases of my 20-year career because you have a right to defend your own home. You, you should not be wrongfully accused of a crime. You have a right to keep drugs and alcohol away from your children. And while we're talking about drugs and alcohol, I can tell you 80% of the people that come through the General Sessions Court have a substance abuse problem. 15% have a mental illness that they're diagnosed with, and our Sheriff's Office does a wonderful job of taking care of those people. But the General Sessions Court is about these people. It's, it's not about you or me. It's about these people that come through the courts. Those are the faces and story, and I am deeply, deeply grateful to my friends who are here tonight, my employees who are here tonight, my husbands who are here tonight, and especially grateful to the four judges who have allowed me to sit special for them. Thank you very much. Rosemary Ducklow Sexton. Madam Vice Mayor and distinguished members of the council, I'm Ed Yarbrough. I'm a lawyer here in Nashville with the firm of Walker Tips and Malone, and it's my honor tonight to nominate and introduce to you Rosemary Sexton, an assistant district attorney general here in Davidson County and an applicant for the job of Metropolitan General Sessions Court Judge. She's only given me uh, two minutes of her five, so I'm gonna have to work fast here. But I do wanna say uh, very quickly, that 40 years ago, I was working on this very floor of the courthouse right down the hall as a student assistant in the district attorney's office for Tom Shriver, one of, one of I think, the great public servants of our community. And I learned how important the job of assistant district attorney is and how many crucial decisions that person makes over the course of a career. Rosemary Sexton, in her career, has not only been a zealous advocate for the state of Tennessee in many court cases, but also has learned the additional skill of an administrator, a decision maker, and someone who can uh, work problems out. And you know, a lot of times a General Sessions judge is not just a judge, but he or she is also a problem solver. And Rosemary Sexton has proven in the many years that she's been doing the job she's doing right now, how good she can be at that, and I believe she could transfer that ability to this court. There's a lot more I could say about her, but I think that she has earned the right to apply for this position, and if elected, would serve as an excellent judge, and you would be very proud that you supported Rosemary Sexton, and I'd like to now introduce you to her for a few remarks. Thank you, Mr. Yarborough. It is really an honor to be introduced by the former United States Attorney. General Sessions Court includes two civil dockets, two traffic dockets, seven criminal dockets, and three criminal settlement dockets. So that you can see the bulk of the work in General Sessions Court is, involves criminal cases, 120,000 of which were filed last year in General Sessions Court. Now law changes with every appellate decision, but you really learn the law through experience. I have tried every kind of case from a disorderly, disorderly conduct to a first degree murder case. I have argued tons, literally thousands of motions dealing with issues, search and seizure issues, search warrant issues, motions to suppress evidence. It takes experience to rule on complex legal issues. And I have that experience. For 28 years, I have been a prosecutor in the district attorney's office. For 20 years, I have been the head of the General Sessions Unit. But in addition to knowledge and experience, a judge must also have an even temperament, a good work ethic, an understanding of people, an ability to work with other agencies. And I have worked with every agency in this government the sheriff, the police department. I've done that for the purpose 
of initiating innovative court changes in the system. I started the settlement docket to save police officer overtime pay. I started the warrant screening office because I wanted to take out the unfounded and frivolous warrants. So a citizen who's seeking a warrant has to see an assistant DA first. And we send cases to mediation, but we can also say no. I think I have proven that I have the ability to be a judge, but I also think that a little humility might help all of us. I have worked with thousands of victims as an assistant DA, and as a judge, you have to be concerned with victims and their plight. The main complaint I get from victims is they feel like they're the ones being punished. They have repeated court appearances. They come to court and they have to wait all day for their case to be heard. They have to leave work, often without pay. They have to pay to park and $14 a day. As a judge, I would never let a citizen be abused. I would never let a victim be abused. The citizens that come to General Sessions Court get their perception of the justice system and the city government from that experience. I promise if I'm selected to be a General Sessions judge, I will be fair, be courteous, punctual. I will listen to other, both sides, and I believe I will be a credit to this city. I feel I am the most qualified candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Paul J. Walwin. Good evening, Madam Vice Mayor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the council. It is a pleasure to be in front of you this evening for consideration for this position. You've heard uh, from very many different individuals this evening that are qualified for this position that you have to make an important decision tonight as to whether or not you will vote for them or not vote for them for this position. This is a position that's very close to my heart based on the fact that I've been practicing in Nashville for over 16 years in the surrounding counties and have also practiced out of state um, for some major cases. This position that was held by Judge Rubin, who was a very dear friend of mine, is a position that requires not just the time during the week uh, when your dockets are going on, but also the time that's put in between, the time that the officers have to come to your house in the middle of the night, early in the morning to get search warrants signed, the time to sign a set-aside order for someone that missed a court date based on a, a possible error that was given to them in court or a, an illness in their family. This is the court where everyone is touched by. You, the person that lives on the other side of town, someone that's driving through this town, this court touches every single facet of what we consider as Nashvillians in our daily lives. I grew up most of my life in Madison, Tennessee, um, in the community down in the Bend, and I've seen the city change in many ways, some for the better, some for the worse. General Sessions Court can make a difference, whether it be a civil case, whether it be a criminal case, because it's a court of first impression that basically makes the difference as to whether things go further. And most people's cases are resolved in General Sessions Court. And while that's so important is the person that's sitting on the bench, and I've seen Judge Rubin do it many times before, has a tough decision on whether a case proceeds to criminal court, to the grand jury, or whether a civil case is something that's going to be appealed, whether someone gets kicked out of their house, whether a landlord's being fair, so many different things this judge has to do. And so as you consider this evening, as you consider who you're going to vote for, who you think is best qualified, think about the people that actually have been in the trenches. Think about the individuals that have been before you this evening that spoke, who've actually done the job. I've handled these cases 
for years and years and years. I've sat at one point for all 11 General Sessions uh, positions. And the reason why this is so important is because those decisions change people's lives. Just today in court, I handled a case that made a difference between whether someone is going to have a permanent record for the rest of their life or whether or not they would be able to change and turn around and redeem themselves. And as a judge, when you have the district attorney on one side, a defense attorney on the other side, and a lot of times in general sessions court, the person doesn't have enough money and they had, didn't take the time to go to the public defender's office, which is a great opportunity for them that they pass up, but they come thinking they can handle the matter on their own. And they are not armed or equipped properly to how to handle their situation. It is that moment that can change history for that person, that family, that victim. And I ask you to think about that when you vote tonight, and I'd appreciate your consideration. Thank you for your time. Councilman Stein, committee report. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Budget and finance met with actually all 10 of the candidates. Rose. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they can come there too. Um, the Rules Committee met with all 10 of the candidates, eight of whom are still candidates this evening, and all were recommended to this body as qualified to serve. Thank you, Councilman Stein. Uh, please listen carefully. We're going to distribute the ballot and you will write in the name of the candidate you're voting for. Please print carefully so they can read who you're voting for. Also, if you do not put your name and your district number on your ballot, it will be disqualified. Your vote will not count if you do not put your name and your district or your name and at large on your ballot. Labor. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Just for clarity, is, is this a one vote ballot or is this an elimination ballot? It depends on how many votes the candidates get in the first round. Oh, okay. So it's not just a one vote it ballot? It could be, depending on if someone gets the majority of the votes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did I not understand your question? We're voting for one person on this ballot, and uh, I guess what I guess what I'm asking if somebody gets 21 votes is that uh, okay? That's what I'm asking. But print carefully so we can tell who you're voting for. No, at large does not get two votes. So it's a <laughs> Good try.
you will be called upon to confirm your vote. Uh, please um, say yes, confirming, or no, you didn't vote for that person when it is read. Madam Clerk. Barry for Jamison. Yes. Stein for Freeman. Yes. Garrett for Mike Speedo Jamison. Mike Speedo Jamison. Yes, <laughs> Tigard for Blake Freeman. Correct. Maynard for Jamison. Yes. Matthews for Jamison. Yes. Harrison for Jamison. Yes. Hunt for Freeman. Yes. Banks for Jamison. Yes. Davis, Scott Davis for Jones. Yes. Westerholm for Jamison. Yes. Anthony Davis for Jamison. Yes. Bennett for Freeman. Yes. Pridemore for Freeman. Pardue for Freeman, Jernigan for Freeman, Glover for Freeman, Stites for Jameson, Stanley for Jameson, Claiborne for Freeman, Tenpenny for Jones, James, I'm sorry, Moore for Jameson, Allen for Jameson, Gilmore for Jameson, Baker for Freeman, Langster for Freeman, Wiener for Jameson, Evans for Jameson, Holloman for Jameson, <laughs> McGuire for Jameson, Harmon for Jones, is that a yes? Okay, Blay Blaylock for Jones, Dominey for Freeman, Johnson for Jones, Johnson, Potts for Jones, Bednay for Jones, Dowell for Jameson, Duval for Freeman, Todd for Jameson. Mitchell for Freeman. Uh, Jameson 19, Freeman 15, Jones 7, we will have a runoff between Jameson and Freeman. I think one of the at-large council members got two <laughs> votes. I'm not real sure. Okay, Jameson 18, Freeman 15, Jones 7. We will have a runoff between Jameson and Freeman, and I will tell you in just a moment which button for which one. When you vote, Freeman is green, Jameson is red. Freeman is green, Jameson is red. Has everyone voted? Madam Clerk. Freeman 16, Jameson 24. Mr. Jameson is a judge. We're now at the point on our agenda for elections and confirmations. Council Member Stein.
The Rules Committee met with Mr. Ed Cawthorn, a new appointment to the Electrical Examiners and Appeals Board, and recommends his approval, 11-4, none against. And I move his, I move his approval. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Councilman Stein. The Rules Committee met with Mr. D.J. Robertson, a reappointment to the Electrical Examiners and Appeal Board. We recommend his approval, 11 for, none against, and I so move. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. The Rules Committee met with Ms. Margot McCormick, a first-time appointment to the Farmers Market Board. We recommend her approval, 11 for, none against, and I so move. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And finally, we met with Mr. Slade Severe, a first-time appointee to the Stormwater Management Committee. We recommend his approval, 11 for, none against, and I move his approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Ed Cawthorn. D.J. Robertson, Margot McCormack, and Slade Severe. On behalf of the Metropolitan Council, thank you so much for volunteering your valuable time and your expertise for our city. Thank you very much. Okay. Tonight we're going to be uh, implementing one of our new rules, and I think Mr. Cooper sent you all an email this morning. Uh, we're going to consider resolutions as part of the consent agenda. All resolutions on tonight's agenda receiving a unanimous committee recommendation and for which there are no amendments or substitutes will be considered with one vote. I will call on the committee chairs to give a report regarding all the resolutions referred to the committee that received a unanimous recommendation. Each committee chair should give a single report for all such resolutions. After hearing the committee reports, I will read all of the captions for the resolutions that received a unanimous recommendation for approval. Any member of the council desiring to take a separate vote on any of the resolutions should press their request to speak button so that resolution can be removed from the consent agenda. I will then call on Councilman Stein as chair of the rules committee to make a motion that the consent agenda be adopted. So I am now going to ask the various committee chairs for their one report. Councilman McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So to get the procedure correct, I read all of our approved agendas. No. Just the just, numbers. Just the, just the, just the, the resolution numbers. The resolution numbers and, the and the report <coughs> of only the approved ones, not the as substituted or deferred. Thank you very much. RS 2011-28, uh, Budget and Finance Approved 13-0. RS 2011-77, uh, Approved 14-0. RS 2011-79, approved 15-0. And am I doing this correctly? You can just, if you want to take all the numbers. Oh, just all, okay. 33, 34, 35. It doesn't matter that the committee report, the makeups no, are different. Long as it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Um, RS 2011-80, RS 2011-81, RS 2011-82, RS 2011-83. RS 2011-84, RS 2011-85, RS 2011-86, RS 2011-87, RS 2011-88, RS 2011-89, RS 2011-91. RS 2011 BL 2011-2. BL. Just the resolution. Oh, just the resolution. Yes, Excuse sir. me. And I believe that is all of our resolutions. Thank you, Council Member Hunt. Resolution 2011-89 was approved unanimously, 11 all. That's my report. Council Member Langster. Uh, 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Health, Hospital, and Social Service Committee approved the following resolutions. Resolution RS 2011-82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, and 89. That's my report. Thank you. Councilman Jernigan. Parks Committee approved RS 2011 77, 79, 89, 60. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and Zoning Committee unanimously recommended approval of RS 2011 77. Council Member Berry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, Housing Committee voted unanimously on 81 and 89, 5 4, 0 against. Council Member Tiger. The Convention, Tourism, and Public Facilities Com Committee unanimously recommended RS 2011 89, 5 and 0. Thank you. Does any council member wish to pull any of those? Sorry? Okay. All of these are on the consent agenda. Does any council member wish to have any of those removed that you just received the report on? Seeing none. Um, RS 2011-77, a resolution authorizing Director of Public Property or his designee to exercise an option to purchase real property, map uh, 1630000, parcel 255, for use as a community recreation center, public library, and storage, including conversion of a parking area to a recreational area. RS 2011-79, a resolution approving an application for a grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation in partnership with the Southern Off-Road Bicycling Association for construction of two mountain bike trails in Cane Ridge and Bells Bend Park. RS 2011-80, a resolution approving an interlocal agreement between the Emergency Communications District for Nashville and Davidson County and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County for partial funding of an upgrade to the 800 MHZ simulcast trunk radio system for emergency dispatch and response. RS 2011-81, a resolution approving the Benefit Board's waiver of repayment of disability pension benefit overpayments to Michael Langford under Section 3.0823 of the Metropolitan Code. RS 2011-82, a resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting for and through the Metropolitan Social Services Commission to provide homemaker services to eligible customers. RS 2011-83, a resolution approving Amendment 4 to a grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro, Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metro Board of Health to protect air quality to achieve established ambient air standards and protect human health. RS 2011-84, resolution approving contract amendment 10 by and between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the United Way of Metropolitan Nashville, to arrange assistance in the planning, development, and delivery of services for minority individuals affected and infected with HIV AIDS. RS 2011-85, a resolution approving a contract for services by and between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the Vanderbilt Center for Health Services to provide college students through the communities and students together for Learning Enhanced Services Program to become community health workers to improve pediatric health outcomes. 
Resolution uh, 201186, a resolution approving a contract by and between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the National Step Show Alliance to provide various step programs for project diabetes implementation activities in Davidson County. RS 201187, a resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health in the provision of immunization program activities and staffing to monitor and assess the delivery of services by providers in Davidson County. RS 2011-88, a resolution approving Amendment 3 to a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Davidson, of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Matthew Walker Com Comprehensive Health Center, Incorporated, for a mobile clinic to provide early periodic screening and diagnosis and treatment exams. RS 2011-89, a resolution appropriating the amount of $9,950,200 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of Metropolitan Government in Davidson County. RS 2011-90, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the Metropolitan Government's property damage claim against Camellia S. Hatcher. RS 2011-91, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the Metro Government's property damage claim against Van 2. Uh, Councilman Stein, could you give the committee a uh, report on uh, RS 2011-92? Oh, I'm sorry. Codes. Sorry. Thank RS 2011-92. I apologize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Codes and uh, Ferris and Farmers Market Committee approve 740 against. Thank you, Councilman Maynard. RS 2011-92, a resolution requesting the Metropolitan Board of Fair Commissioners to consider including a theme park as part of the Fairgrounds Master Plan. Councilman Stein. I move approval of all the bills on our consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Uh, now for the other resolutions is RS 2011-28, a resolution to acquire additional or different easements or property rights for use in public projects of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County with relation to project number 10 SG200, Munn Road, Road Pump Station. Council Member Stanley. Uh, I wish to uh, make a motion to withdraw this bill at this time with a couple of comments. Uh, committee report, uh, Councilman Stein. To me. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm reading what's in front of That's me. That's okay. I, apologize. I, just, I, I was just thinking that we missed something earlier. I, I just keep calling on you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm befuddled at every turn. <laughs> That's my job. Let's see. <laughs> Councilman Hunt. Public Works Committee, at the request of the sponsor, withdrew the bill 1140 against. Councilman McGuire. Public Works voted to approve 154, none against. Councilman Stanley. Uh, I just wish to uh, withdraw this bill because I've uh, spoken with uh, uh, Mr. Henry. He's the uh, attorney that's working uh, with the uh, property owner in negotiations with Metro Nashville. They have, uh, they're close to uh, reaching an agreement, but uh, once they do reach the agreement, uh, he's under the understanding that uh, because this Monroe property is in no longer in District 14, it's in District 15, it's the responsibility of the uh, uh, current councilman to uh, file a resolution once negotiations have been completed. So I just wish to, wish to withdraw this bill. We have a motion and a second on withdrawal. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Sorry. Councilman McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, just John or, or maybe someone from the administration, I just uh, wanted to make sure this wasn't going to throw anything off, wasn't going to delay any processes, anything like that. Do we have any information on that currently available? Uh, 
I don't know. I haven't spoken to the water department about this one. Um, I don't know what impact a, a uh, withdrawal would have. Um, the Metro Legal may have more information. Well, uh, I respectfully disagree with what Mr. Henry told the council member. Uh, the negotiations that the Metro uh, Metro is involved in with the property owner. Uh, really isn't going to be affected by this. This legislation was to clear up previous legislation that was filed where the map didn't match what the description said that the easement was. And that's what we were trying to accomplish with this. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is RS 2011-59, approves a contract for services between the Metro Board of Health and the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church to improve kitchen facilities in the church by purchasing new equipment and to develop and promote community gardens in North Nashville. Council Member Langster. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I believe there's an amendment I'd like to move Need uh, your committee report first. Okay, committee report two, four, two against have one abstention. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'd like to move the amendment. We have a motion and a second. Um, Mr. Cooper, could you ex explain the amendment, please? The amendment substitutes the contract, and the substitute contract has the language uh, pertaining to uh, furtherance of the church's ministry and part of the church's regular activities it has that language removed so that the the face of the contract itself um, is is for a secular purpose we have a motion and a second on the amendment councilman dominey do you wish to speak on the amendment i wish to speak on the main bill i wish to speak on the main bill okay thank you all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. Council Member Langster. Thank you. After a very long, informative, and engaging meeting, um, um, the committee uh, came to an agreement and voted to defer to the second meeting in December, which I wholeheartedly approve of. Uh, the committee gave no report, but that can be your motion. Yes, my motion is to defer to the second meeting in December. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Dominey, do you wish to speak on the deferral motion? I have a question regarding the bill itself, uh, and I would most likely support the deferral motion, but my concern is if we're putting a uh, capital expenditure into a church structure, does that impact its tax exempt status down the road since we're using federal uh, federal funds or government funds to do that the fact that these funds that are are not to be or the the equipment purchased with these funds that is not to be used for a religious purpose are are, are part of the church it could jeopardize part or all of the tax exempt status of the church, but that would be up to the state board to determine. Um, Metro itself cannot make that determination, but that it, it could lead to that if that issue was raised. All right, thank you. Councilman Claiborne, you wish to speak on the deferral? Okay. All in favor of the de wanting to clarify that this is passed through money. This is not Metro money, but this is a grant money that's being passed through. I just, is that correct? From the federal yes, sir. From okay. the federal government. Thank you. All in favor of the deferral, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Deferral passes. Um, Councilman Stein, I'm reluctant to call upon you, but my agenda says that you have a late resolution. <laughs> and I know, and I do apologize to everyone. There is a late resolution. Um, it is sponsored by, by Councilman Tigert. The committee did hear it, and we, we recommended 11 for and none against. Um, should I make the motion to suspend the rules, or Councilman? And then I would move to suspend the rules um, to consider this. This is, involves a, um, a, a 
person for a variety of reasons that is a late notary that meets all the qualifications and would add her to the list. Is there any objection to a suspension of the rules? Seeing none. Um, I would then move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at bills on introduction and first reading. Is there a motion for their approval? Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at bills on second reading. BL 2011-2 amends the Metro Code to allow a $1 litigation tax on all cases in general sessions and juvenile courts to be used for centers that handle victim offender mediation and other community mediation matters. Council Member Barry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We're back to the regular thing, right? So committee reports. <laughs> Okay, committee reports, please. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Much more comfortable in this situation. <laughs> Budget and Finance voted to approve 15 for, none against. Thank you, Council Member Barry. Uh, with the committee report in, I move approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion. Councilman Claiborne. Point of order uh, on resolution RS 201178. Uh, there was a um, substitution to that, and I think we m ran through that. I you are absolutely correct. right. We will go back. Okay. Did we approve the one we just had, right? Yes, ma'am. You don't have to do it again. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> uh, in fact, we will go back to RS 2011-78 right now. Um, it's a resolution authorizing the acquisition of property by negotiation or condemnation for use in public project or metropolitan government of Nashville and Davidson County and specifically with relation to the construction of the new fire station in the Jolton area. Council Member Matthews. Committee reports. Council Member McGuire. Budget and Finance approved as substituted 14 for none against. Council Member Mitchell. Uh, public safety approved as substituted 5-0. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning approved as substituted 9-0. Councilman Matthews. I'd like to move the substitute. Second. Have a motion and a second on the substitute. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Councilman. And I'd like to move the bill as substituted. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. My apologies, Councilman Matthews. Uh, now we're on BL 2011-3. Amends the Metro Code to allow recreational athletic fields and associated structures to be constructed within the floodplain under certain conditions. Council Member Tigert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Committee reports, please. Councilman Hunt. Committee report, uh, Public Works approved 11-4-0 against. Councilman Jernigan. Parks, Library, Recreation approved six in favor, zero against. Councilman Tiger. I think there's an amendment uh, that was uh, offered at, uh, by the Stormwater Department Administration itself. This amendment would give the administrative uh, staff the authority to approve these variances in the if, uh, condition that uh, there was an uh, objection or whatnot. It could be appealed to, their decision could be appealed to the Stormwater Committee. So I would move the amendment, which I believe was considered by both committees also. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Councilman Tiger. I would move Bill 2011-3 as amended uh, with a brief explanation. Second. Have a motion and a second, Councilman. Mr. Cooper did a very good analysis. Uh, let me just say, uh, Madam Chair, that as an individual whose family was very, very adversely affected by the May 2010 flood. I would never be involved or sponsor anything that, that could potentially have an adverse effect on any citizen in this community. My 82-year-old mother had five feet of water in her river plantation home. 
My 31-year-old daughter had three and a half feet in her condo, and uh, a careless driver drove a car into a lake uh, and lost a vehicle. Um, this bill, uh, when the bot, when this council reacted to the the flood, and very rightly so, to to do whatever we could to prevent uh, downstream flooding in the future, took a very bold step. Um, with the idea that uh, we understood that there would be a need in certain cases for variances. For instance, uh, Metro builds bridges with abutments to hold those bridges up in, in floodways, floodplains. Uh, there were other uh, temporary storage building and surface parking lots and, and other water-related structures that uh, it was deemed were appropriate uses and could be allowed in floodways. This bill tonight would have no adverse effect or do nothing to hurt anyone downstream. Simply, it realizes the reality in our community that kids' athletic fields, based on a scarcity of land, the topography of our community, and a scarcity of land, there are very few available locations other than floodways and floodplains for kids' soccer fields, baseball, and softball diamonds to be built. Occasionally, there are needs in these facilities and these community groups that host these events to have dugouts, uh, fences around the ball field, storage sheds for mowers and, and whatnot. And this bill, if they can prove that they could build these structures that would have no impact and not cause any flooding downstream, this bill would add those other already permitted uses to the list um, that would be permitted. And I would submit to you, council members, Madam Chair, that uh, our kids need places for recreation facilities. Our mayor has taken a very strong stand to promote recreation in this community being active, and that starts with our children. So I hope you understand um, that the emails we've received, I think there's some uh, information out there that may not be as realistic, that this will do nothing if these groups can prove to our stormwater management and or the stormwater committee that they would have no impact downstream. So I would appreciate your consideration on behalf of our children. Thank you. Council Member Evans. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I regret to tell the sponsor that I'm, I'm going to have to vote against this. I served on the um, floodplain committee, um, and I've worked on this issue for five years now. And while I appreciate the need and the interest in ball fields, um, when you start talking about structures, dugouts, fences, those things contribute to flooding. Um, there's a fence in, in my neighborhood that got all balled up with debris, and you know, before you knew it, it was a huge problem problem during the May flood. Um, I also looked at some of the property then, that uh, I think the councilman's concerned about, and large chunks of it are in the flood plain, which does allow construction. So a lot of these things can go forward. They can do everything they want to do as community assets by putting, the, just moving the structure and having it in the flood plain instead of the flood way, which really does flood. Um, the other thing I want to remind us all of is that um, Jim Cooper gave a talked to us uh, last week, and if you were there, you know that the federal government spent $800 million on this city after the flood. That came in the form of payments to people, that came in the form of uh, insurance, that came in the form of helping us dig out from the mess we were in. So going and putting more stuff in harm's way so that we can go back to the federal government who's broke and ask for more money, I think is, is just wrongheaded. It's bad policy, and I'm going to vote against it. Council Member Domini. Thank you, um, Vice Mayor. I rise in support of this. I can tell you there are ways to build structures in the floodway that does not adversely impact downstream residents. It's been a, this, I've sat in the stormwater committee discussing that very thing. There's a number of things that occur. Right now our, our fields uh, where our children are playing, they require restroom facilities. Right now our solution to that when we can't build a structure is to put a portage on there. That does not, in the event of a flood, help our downstream water quality because that becomes a floating object uh, full of substances we don't want in our water. The fact is, if we can build a structure, we can build them with valves and, and 
protection so we do not have sewage backing up into our flood water if we build them. But we can't do that with a port john The fact is we can build them so there are vents, foundation vents and wall vents that allow water to pass through them so they don't take away storage capacity in our flood plains. So we can do this and it is appropriate to allow the stormwater administration and the stormwater committee to approve these to allow for options for our communities to, to have places for our children to play. And in particular, there's a number of, res of properties in the 28th district where people can do nothing right now because of the law that was passed, even though they have property that could and has been used in the past for ball fields. But they can't do anything with it because they can't get restroom facilities because we can't build a structure. This is a reasonable approach. It allows for protection under the Stormwater Administration as well as the Stormwater Committee to make sure we're protected, residents are protected in the floodplain. And I ask you for support. Thank you. Councilman Holloman. I don't want to belabor the point, but I, I do want to agree with Councilor Lady Evans. I have a lot of concern, particularly in light of all of the money that we spent to repair facilities all around our city and saw things from trailers to fences washed into culverts, blocking culverts and causing exacerbation, exacerbation of damage. Um, most importantly, though, my concern with this bill is actually, as amended, um, it, it doesn't require that some of these improvements go to the Stormwater Committee for a full hearing. Um, and unless that happens, we're going to have a lot of folks that are unaware that these are being built, and we're not going to have a full airing of all of the facts on these issues. This is an important issue. We saw that in May of 2010. I think at a minimum, it needs to be considered by the full Stormwater Committee. And so for that reason, I also um, rise to ask you not to support this. I'm for ball fields. I'm for kids. But I'm also for less flood damage. And I think that's an important priority of this city. So I'll ask you to join me in voting no. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-4 amends the Metro Code to require quarterly stormwater reports to be submitted to the Metro Council. Council Member Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilman McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance at the request of the sponsor voted to defer one meeting 15-4, none against. Council Member Hunt. Budget, I mean, sorry. Public Works uh, voted to defer this bill 11-0. Thank you, Council Member Stanley. I move a uh, one meeting deferral. We have a motion with a couple of comments, Councilman. I just uh, wanted to let everyone know that uh, I've spoken with uh, representatives from the Water Department. They've informed me that they would like for me to meet with the stormwater officials as well as uh, some of their engineers to uh, try and address this more thoroughly. Uh, when I deferred this uh, initially, uh, about a month ago, they said they were going to get in touch with me. But they haven't been in touch with me since then. But uh, they said yesterday that they would be in touch with me. They're going to get back in touch with me. They said they want to have Metro Nashville more aware of where this money is going because this money comes from your taxpaying citizens. This is a municipal program and we have an obligation to the citizens of this city to make sure that that money is distributed equal, equitably among all of the Davidson County districts. I will say, I'll give you an example. One of the problems I have with this program, of course, I was on the uh, Stormwater Management Task Force. I was one of the four council members that was appointed to that task force in 1996. And we developed this program. And one of the things that uh, the Louisville uh, agents and the Charlotte, North Carolina agents informed me was that we needed to have, if we're going to adopt a program, we needed to have it open. We needed to have the officials open, especially to the elected officials. We're elected to represent the people of this city. We have an obligation to the people of this city to make sure that their money is used in an appropriate fashion. I will let you know uh, an example of this program. The problems that I have with this program is the grading system that is offered uh, to each project by the stormwater engineers. Well, if you have a grading system that 
is grades one through four, and you have two projects, one in one section of Davidson County and another in another section of Davidson County, but both receive a grade of three, which project will get priority consideration? Will it be some uh, project in District 14, in District 15, in District 33, or where will it be? And the council cannot give any answers. I've had uh, constituents contact me. They've had issues with the stormwater. The engineers have gone out and they've uh, looked over these properties and they've designated these as projects. But these projects, it's been two years and they're still sitting there blindly, unfunded, undone. And it's the individuals that continue to get uh, problems with this. I'm willing to work with the water services individuals and also the Metro Council. I would like to have as many people as I can support this measure because I think the stormwater, the water services department have an obligation to maintain an open line of communication with the people on this council because we represent, we are elected to represent the citizens of this city. So with that, I'll ask that it be deferred for uh, one meeting uh, to give the water services officials time to work with me, and to get in touch with me, and let me know about uh, what would be a more appropriate manner to handle this uh, lack of communication. Thank you. All in favor of the deferral, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is BL 2011-16, amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by changing the name of Centennial Place to Wayne Wise Place. Councilman Hunt. The Public Works voted 11-0 to defer for two meetings. Councilman Harrison. Uh, traffic and parking uh, uh, voted 6-4 and 0 against to defer for two meetings. Councilmember Claiborne. Planning and Zoning voted 9-0 uh, to defer for two meetings. Council Member Hunt. I move to defer this bill for two meetings. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-31 amends the Metro Code regulating the acceptance of food and beverages for Metro government employees, elected officials, and members of boards and commissions. Council Member Tiger. Thank you. Committee report, please. Council Member Stein. Rules voted 10-4 and one against to approve. Council Member Tiger. I would move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. I would just say uh, Mr. Cooper gave a great analysis. Uh, this was part of the ethics, independent ethics task force recommendation that we chose to overlook and it just seems to me that as long as we're reporting uh, a meal from a, a neighbor or any other individual or entity that might have business before this body on our annual disclosure statement that I don't see anyone in this body or never been with anyone that would likely to be influenced by going next door to a neighbor's house or a community meeting and being influenced by a cup of coffee. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-32 amends the Metro Code to require Metro government contractors to present proof of a valid business tax license before receiving payment for performance of the contract. Council Member Tiger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Committee report, please. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to defer 15-4, none against. Council Member Tiger. At the request of the Finance Department, I would move for a one meeting deferral. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Deferring motion passes. BL 2011-33 amends the Metro Code to provide the ability for procurement assistance to service disabled veteran business enterprises. Council Member Hunt. I move for approval. Councilman McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve as amended 15-4, none against. Thank you. Council Member Hunt, do you have an amendment? No. Oh, yes, that is an amendment. No, it's not an amendment on this one. It is. I was distracted there for a minute. 
<laughs> what is the amendment? It's yeah. a housekeeping amendment. Yeah. The, the bill uh, as filed mistakenly included a couple words that, that could have an adverse legal impact. So this just uh, corrects the language to reflect the original intent. Oh, yes. <laughs> I move for approval. We have a motion on the amendment. Is there a second? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. Council Member Hunt. And I'd like to move the bill as amended. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201134 amends the Metro Code relative to the regulation of excessive growth of vegetation and accumulation of weeds. Council Member Hunt. Ooh. <laughs> Committee report, please. Council Member Maynard. Codes approved 740 against. Council Member Hunt. Move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201135 adopts property identification maps for Metro government for real estate and tax assessment purposes. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted to approve 9-0 and I would move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201136 authorizes the acquisition of easements for the Lakewood Laterals and Rehabilitation Project. Councilmember Jernigan. Committee reports, please. Councilman McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve 15-4, none against. Councilman Claiborne. Planning and Zoning voted to approve 9-4-0 against. Councilmember Hunt. Public Works approved 11-4-0 against. Councilmember Jernigan. Move approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201137 establishes a program for the purpose of providing assistance to low-income elderly residents of Metro Government for fiscal year 2011-2012. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to approve 14-4, none against, and I would move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201138 approves an agreement for the indefinite uh, loan of artwork to Metro Government from De Duluth Associates, Inc. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to approve 15-4, none against, and I move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201139 approves a contract with United Road Towing for the administration and operation of the Metro Impound Lot. Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, Public Safety approved 5-0. Council Member McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve 15-4, none against. Councilman Mitchell. Move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 201140 amends the Metro Code relative to the privilege tax on tickets sold for events at LP Field. Council Member Westerholm. Committee reports. Council Member Tigert. Tourism Convention Public Facilities voted to approve 440 against one abstention. Council Member McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve 154, none against. Council Member Westerholm. Move approval. Have a motion and a second. Councilman Claiborne. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I uh, rise to express concerns about what we are about to do. Uh, I don't disagree that these uh, improvements are not needed, and I don't disagree that they will not have a positive impact on the stadium. But as an elected official for uh, the constituents of the 15th District, I have to recognize that there are red flags waving. We are about to improve a 25-year loan that extends nine years beyond the current contract for the Titans. That means we don't have a guarantee in those last nine years that we're going to have a team that's playing over there in the stadium. The upgrades that this money is going to buy 
according to Mr. Cooper's analysis, has an average life expectancy of 18 years. That means that they are obsolete seven years before this loan that we're about to co-sign matures. We're told that in six years from now, there's going to be approximately 15 million plus or minus dollars required to replace the seats in the stadium. That's another bond issue that goes on top of what we're doing. We're in the situation that we're in because years ago, an administration and a city wanted a NFL football team so bad that they were willing to lay out a blank piece of paper basically and say, write your deal. We're paying for that now. And we're in a position to extend a similar burden to future councils that come in years after we are here. The Titans organization has admitted that they are uh, at fault for the underutilization of the stadium in the uh, years leading up to now. They've come to us with a handout saying help us and in the last week or so they have brought forward uh, the promise of six events uh, next year involving soccer and one major uh, concert event and they have said we're going to do this in the future but we have no guarantee of that they have signed a letter to the sports authority that says we intend to go forward and and try to put more activities in the stadium but they are unwilling at this point in time to agree to any kind of reservation of those profits as an escrow towards some of these future expenses that we know are going to occur. And so I'm just saying that we're about to co-sign a loan with somebody who is not willing to put anything into the pot with us. They are asking us to take the total responsibility for this and they're taking the profits and the benefit away. And we're left holding the bag. And in good conscience, I cannot vote for this. It's my intention to abstain and I would call for a machine vote as we go forward. Thank you. Councilmember Mitchell? No. Councilmember Dominey? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I rise with some concerns on this as well. Um, to, to be as concise as possible, the revenue sources set aside to fund this are going to be used up to, and dedicated to this particular project for 25 years. As Mr. Claiborne has pointed out, the Titans contract expires eight years prior to the termination of this loan. The equipment that is being purchased or the upgrades are being purchased with the exception of the elevators and the hospitality rooms for fans uh, become obsolete in nine to 15 years according to the um, statement from the Titans general manager. So we have 10 years easy that we have we're going to have to be buying additional upgrades, but our revenue will be tied up in this bond. What are we going to do? There is also a concern that the, in order to get a lower tax or lower interest rate on these bonds, we are tying them to the non-tax revenue of the city. Now, I requested information on what those loans were, what we were already committed to, and the outstanding balances on Monday of last week. As of this morning, I got a notice of all the tax revenues, but I didn't get a, a notice of all the income or the, or the loans that are outstanding. I was supposed to get that, but that needed to have been provided long ago so we could address this appropriately in a timely man manner. I can't vote for this as it is. I may well support improving the stadium down the road <coughs> as the bill moves forward, but I have a lot of concerns, and I don't want to mortgage something for longer than its useful life and then tie the hands of a future council and the taxpayers of the city. I can't bring myself to do that. I wouldn't do it with my own finances. I don't want to do that with the government. And I know we've financed things in the past. Government's done a lot of things in the past, but it's got us to where we are now. And I think we need to begin to change that process and make sound fiscal choices. And I don't think this is sound right now. 
Council Member Stein. I'm confused. Mr. Cooper, this is not a bond issue, is it? I mean, aren't we simply raising the, the tax on the ticket for users of the stadium to $3 with this bill? Yes, the, the bond resolution will be coming for the next meeting so that the two track together. So I would totally agree that all of this all of this discussion is probably relevant with regard to issuing the bonds, but there is no circumstance that we could ever imagine for the stadium that the $3 added on won't be usable in some form or fashion for the maintenance of this stadium. So I would say regardless of where one is about issuing bonds or mortgaging all that, we should want it raised to a dollar so that those folks that are using the stadium are paying for whatever improvements are there. So I would say that regardless of where one is, one should be for raising that tax and then all of these issues are perfectly valid um, as we discuss what we're going to issue bonds to do in the stadium. Council Member Evans? Nope. Council Member Mitchell? Council Member Claiborne? Uh, as a follow-up to Councilman Stein's question, Mr. Cooper, uh, does the uh, the measure that we are doing does it tie the uh, seat tax, the two dollar tax, and the one dollar tax to specific improvements that we have in this resolution? No, the the use of the funds is restricted by state law, and this. This has no impact on the use. Now, the reason that we're doing this is so we can have the bond resolution come the next meeting to provide the revenue source. Um, now that I mean, truthfully, the two dollar current tax is, is supposed to be enough to cover the improvements. Um, so the they are separate, but it, it's it's related to the same. Project. I mean, the, the end goal is to get improvements to the stadium, but this extra dollar that's being put on is not tied to any particular improvements. It just has to be used for the construction or improvement of the stadium. In, in some of the, uh, the authority discussions, uh, it seems that the additional $3 tax has been looked at for the seat replacement. Is that... Well, the, the additional dollar, uh, assuming the financing goes as it is anticipated, um, that extra dollar that is being put on by this bill will accumulate in a pot to be used for future improvements. So those funds would be available for the seat ta the uh, seat replacement. Now, they will not be enough to replace the seat, so there will have to be an additional bond issue at that time, but this would put a, a significant dent in, in that. One other question. Uh, what what happens if this uh, fails to get 21 affirmative votes tonight? What would be the effect of that? As long as it gets a majority of those present in voting, it moves on to third reading. Reading. Under state law, it has to get 27 votes on third reading. But what happens if it fails to get a majority? What would happen? What's the effect? It, it's dead. I mean, the, the, the bill fails. Would the uh, sports authority uh, take it up again and bring it back to us? Uh, they could. That, that would be up to the administration and the Titans and the sports authority to determine if there was something else they wanted to do. Seems in the uh, discussions that the Sports Authority were having and bringing this forward, uh, there were some of the members of the Sports Authority who had some uh, uh, compromise issues or some possible solutions that they didn't get to present because uh, the discussion was cut off or called for the question. I would just uh, ask you to entertain uh, abstaining from a vote on this with me and uh, pushing this back to the Sports Authority for reconsideration and look at some of the possible alternatives that might be able to get this to the place where it needs to be. Council Member Glover. M Mr. Riebling, may I have, uh, and perhaps Mr. Cooper, may I have, uh, I guess, clarification. If, if we pass the dollar tonight, uh, we're not committing to any expenditures whatsoever, correct? We're merely exercising the final option of the one dollar. The bill before you tonight does two things, and all, that's all it does. One is it extends, it removes the expiration date on the $2 that are currently in effect. The bill previously enacted by the council had a 2020 expiration date on that tax. We're, we remove that and it, there's no expiration date. It's on for 
forever, I guess, effectively. That's the one thing it does. The second thing this bill does is it authorizes the, the, the imposition of the third one dollar, the third dollar, beginning in 2013. And that's all this bill does. As, as Mr. Cooper pointed out, that when we issue bonds, we've got to have a revenue source to pay for the bonds. And, and so we needed to get this legislation amended and moving forward so that it was on third reading the same night the bond resolution would come before the council for approval, which would authorize the issuance of the debt. And that's, that's when you would get into the specific projects which we've presented. Perhaps it's our fault for confusing it by putting it all together in a presentation, but that's the impact of that is up until you approve a bond resolution, um, there's no money that's going to be spent. There's no projects that are going to be funded. And, and if we have concerns at that point, that would be the time to bring those concerns with regards to the bond issues. Am I correct? I, I defer to you. Okay. Mr. Mr. Cooper. Yes, I mean, if there are concerns about particular projects or, or the expenditure of funds, then it would be when the bond resolution is before the council, correct? Thank you. Council Member Maynard. Call for the question. And we have a motion for previous question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Previous question passes. Councilman Claiborne requested a machine vote. I need five folks to request a machine vote. Okay. Okay, we will have a machine vote. Yes, yes, yes. Madam Clerk, will you close the machines? 36 aye, one no. Two Mo abstentions. Motion passes. Next is BL 2011-41, amends the Metro Code by changing the residency and stock ownership requirements for applicants seeking a certificate of compliance for a retail liquor license issued by the State of Tennessee Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Council Member Garrett. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. A committee report, please. Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, public safety approved 4-0. Council Member Garrett. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Anytime you're dealing with uh, liquor issues, I would like to want everybody to make sure that, that we understand this. John, will you tell this is an estate issue that we're dealing with and nothing more than that? Will you give just a brief explanation? So. Uh, this ordinance would um, mirror the, the spirit of the state law as it relates to residency requirements for liquor store owners. Currently, state law requires that you either have lived in the state of Tennessee for the two years before obtaining the, the uh, license, or you lived in Tennessee at any point in your life for 10 consecutive years. However, the Metro Code requires that you have been a resident of Davidson County for two years before you get your, your license. It makes no reference to 10 consecutive years. The issue that has, has come up um, that led to this bill is some liquor store owners as part of their estate plan would like to leave the store to their adult children who may happen to live uh, in Rutherford County or, or another county in Tennessee but who lived in Davidson County for at least 10 years. Right now under the current code, uh, if that store was left to their children, their children would not be able to to obtain the license. So this is to address that issue, and it mirrors the um, the the state law intent. Thank you. I guess worst case scenario when the gentleman brought this to me was is that if if you owned a liquor store and your children were in college and the college happened to be in another state or in another part or in another county other than Davidson County and you died then you could not leave your store to your to your to your children. That's the simplicity of it. What this does, and it hasn't been changed since 1963, so what this does is change it and get to this at least mirror to what the state does. That's what it does. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. 
BL 2011-42 approves a utility relocation contract between the Department of Water and Sewage Services and the State Department of Transportation to relocate certain metro facilities required by the state's uh, Battery Lane Bridge project. Council Member Todd. Committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Public Works approved 11-4-0 against. Council Member McGuire. Budget and finance approved as amended 15-4, none against. Council Member Todd. Move approval. Have a motion. Uh, there's an amendment. Um, move the amendment. Ha have a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. Council Member Todd. I'd move the bill as amended. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-43 authorizes the acquisition of an easement for property located at 826 Camac Court. Uh, for the Westmead Re Reservoir Project. Council Member Evans. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted to approve 9 0. Uh, Council Member Hunt. Public Works voted to approve 11 4 0 against. Council Member McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve 15 4 not against. Council Member Evans. Move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-44 uh, authorizes the acquisition of easements to upgrade the Metro Center pump station upgrade at the intersection of Mainstream Drive and Great Circle Road. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve. Council Member Hunt. Public Works approved 11 4 0 against. Council Member McGuire. Budget and Finance voted to approve 15 4 none against. Council Member Harrison. Thank you. I move for approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011 45 abandons water main and sanitary sewer line and accepts the relocation of a water main, one fire hydrant and one manhole located at 2010 Bernard Circle. Council Member Hunt. Committee re report approved 11-4-0 against. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve. Council Member Hunt. Move for approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-46 authorizes the acceptance of an easement located at 7158 Old Hickory Boulevard for the Whites Creek Stream Bank Stabilization Project. Council Member Hunt. Committee report, please. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve. Council Member Hunt. Public Works approve 11-4-0 against, and I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at bills on third reading. BL 2011-5 names the Nashville Municipal Auditorium as the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum at Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Are all committee reports in. Okay, I would like to move for approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion. And a second, council member. Thank you. Uh, the Musicians Hall of Fame opened in 2006 just because some people had some questions for it. And when the MCC was built uh, in that original uh, uh, footprint, it moved uh, to the Municipal Auditorium. And as a result of that, they are co-branding and it's no cost to the city. Some people were worried about the cost to the city and I think it's a great addition to the city of Nashville. It furthers the branding of our name of the um, music city and it further um, enforces some of the great musicians that uh, perform at the Municipal Auditorium like Elvis and Michael Jackson. So uh, with that, I'm excited about it and I want to thank the director, Joe Chambers, and I move for approval again. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. 
BL 2011-6 authorizes the acquisition of property in fee simple by negotiation, condemnation, and acceptance for the purpose of acquiring land to construct a new Metro Nashville Police Precinct. Council Member Moore. All committee reports are in. I move for approval, please. Have a motion second. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-7 abands an 8-inch sanitary sewer line and easement rights on a portion of property located at 3308 Joe Mallet Drive between Manchester Avenue and South Hamilton Road. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All committee reports in. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-8 abands 240 feet of a combination sewer main on property at 220 25th Avenue North and accepts 400 feet of relocated main. Uh, Council Member Hunt. Move for approval, please. There's, we have a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-9 authorizes Metro government to enter into an agreement with First Citizens National Bank to fund the operation and maintenance of a public pressure sewer extension at Cambridge Park. Council Member Hunt. Again, I'd like to move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. <clears throat> BL 2011-10 approves two agreements with Vanderbilt University for participation in cl clinical training of medical students and residents in the Metro Fire Department's first responder and ambulance and rescue programs. Council Member Langster. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Being previously approved, I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-11 abands a sanitary sewer line in Eastman and accepts the relocation of a sanitary sewer line in Eastman on property located at 306 Gallatin Pike. Council Member Pridemore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-12 amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by abandoning a portion of Clay Street, 5th Avenue North, 6th Avenue North, and alley number 207. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committees in, I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-13 amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by abandoning a portion of alley number 908 right away. Council Member Langster. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All previous committees have approved it. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-14 amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by abandoning a portion of John Hager Road right away. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee approvals, I move for a mo uh, approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-15 amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by abandoning a portion of alley number 436 and an unnumbered alley right away. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All committee ports are in. I move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-17 changes 1.36 acres from CS to SP zoning for a portion of property located at 3556 Dickerson Pike to permit automotive sales used, automotive repair, automotive service, and all other uses permitted by the CS district. Council Member Hunt. With all the committee's reporting. Need one more. Council Member Claiborne. Claiborne. Don't forget me. Oh, eight. <laughs> Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve. Thank you, Council Member Hunt. And I'd like to move for approval and we will need a machine vote, please. Okay, um, we have a second. We will have a machine vote.
go for it. Uh, there's been a question as to why there's a machine vote. Um, the Planning Commission had on its consent agenda to approve this bill with conditions. Now, there's a, a legal question as to whether the Planning Commission has the authority under the Charter to make a conditional approval. Um, the conditions that the Planning Commission wanted, which were not, I take that back, which the Planning Staff wanted, which the Commission approved on consent agenda, didn't, um, were sent by an amendment. The applicant and the engineer for the applicant um, felt that the conditions were we're not in the best interest of the development, and so moving the bill without the conditions, um, <coughs> getting 27 votes will cure any possible issue as to whether the, the bill was disapproved by the Planning Commission. Has everyone voted? Madam Clerk, will you close the machines? 37 aye, zero no. Motion passes. BL 2011-18 changes 2.99 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for part of properties located at 4608 Ashland City Highway and part of property located at Ashland City Highway unnumbered west of Riley Parkway to permit building contractor supply and all other uses permitted in the AR2A zoning district. Council Member Matthews. Committee reports, please. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and Zoning Committee voted 9-0 to approve. <coughs> Council Member Matthews. I'd like to move approval. Is there an amendment? There is an amendment. I'd like to move the amendment. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. Councilman. I'd like to move the, bill, the bill as amended. Have a motion and a second, and we will need a machine vote. Has everyone voted? Has everyone voted? Madam Clerk, will you close the machines? 36 aye, one no. Motion passes. Without objection, we can take 2011-19 and 2011-20 together. Seeing none, 2011-19 changes 4.24 acres of property within the former city of Lakewood to SP and 61.68 acres from SP to SP for properties at Old Hickory Boulevard unnumbered, 114 Ray Avenue, Ray Avenue unnumbered, 111 MacArthur Drive, MacArthur Drive unnumbered, Rainer Drive unnumbered, and Kingsway Drive unnumbered, and a portion of properties located at MacArthur Drive unnumbered and at Ray Avenue unnumbered. BL 2011-20 rezones property within the former city of Lakewood, 55.81 acres from residential to RS5, 88.05 acres from R to RS7.5, 53.11 acres from R to RS10, 96.14 acres from R to RS15, 2.59 acres from R to R15, 128.92 acres from R to RS20, 0 0.07 acres from from R to RD20, 0.13 acres from R to RS30, 0.52 acres from R to RM15, 17.57 acres from Commercial Limited to MUN, 2.12 acres from Commercial to MULA, and 42.55 acres from C to MUL. Council Member Jernigan. Could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, co committee report, please. Uh, Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning uh, voted 9-0 to approve, and I would just like to take the opportunity to uh, congratulate uh, Councilman Jerning on shepherding, the, I guess, the largest rezoning that has ever happened in Davidson County. Is that correct? It was a breeze, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Jerning. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I humbly move approval. Well, 
There's a housekeeping amendment on Bill 19, substituting the sketch, and a housekeeping substitute on Bill 20. So uh, you of can move both is. of those together. Okay. <laughs> um, do them together? Yes. Okay. Um, I move both bills as amended. No, the, move the, the amendment and the substitute. We have a motion for the two amendments. Is okay. there a second? Okay. All in favor of the amendments, please say aye. Aye. Councilman Jernigan. I want to move approval for both of those amended bills. Is there a second? second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Motion passes. BL 2011-22, cancel 7.31 acres of the Willie's Nightlife Commercial Plan Unit Development Overlay District located at 2620 and 2622 Music Valley Drive, Zone CA, and proposed for SP, approved for a nightclub and a maintenance garage. We'll Council Member Clayman. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve, and I would move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Okay. Next is BL 2011-23, changes 7.31 acres from CS to SP zoning for properties located within the Willie's Nightlife Commercial Plan Unit Development Overlay District at 2620 and 2622 Music Valley Drive to permit heavy equipment sales and service and all other uses permitted in a CA zoning district. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve and I would move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-24 cancels 1.13 acres of the Music City Outlet Center Plan Unit Development District Overlay for property at 2471 McGavick Pike, Zone CA, and within the Floodplain Overlay District. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve, and I would uh, move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-25 changes 0 0.02 acres from RS-15 to SP zoning for a portion of property located at 3810 Kings Lane to permit a sign totaling 96 square feet in the size containing a 33 square foot digital reader board. Council Member Matthews. Committee report. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 uh, to defer indefinitely at the sponsor's request. Thank you. Council Member Matthews. I like to uh, ask for indefinite deferral with a brief expl explanation. We have a motion and a second, Councilman. Yes. Um, I, after speaking with church leaders and after reading the legal opinion of Metro Legal, uh, the church has decided that they don't want to really impose on other neighborhoods by setting uh, a president if there's a possibility. So they do um, or would rather look at, at going at uh, the zone change from a different angle on their property. We're going to look at amending the SP and working with the planning department, which I've already spoke with Director Rick Bernhardt about, and involving the community and public input on, on the zone change or applying the SP to the entire church's property at this point. Um, hopefully we'll be able to bring a bill forward and, and that the council will approve of that won't set a precedent that will oppose on other neighborhoods and uh, that can get passed through the council. So, and I ask for your support of indefinite deferral. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Matthews. All in favor of indefinite deferral, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2011-27 amends the di district bulk provisions of the Metro Zoning Code to clarify the minimum lot requirements when a right-of-way dedication is required. Council Member Claiborne. Planning and zoning voted 9-0 to approve, and I would move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is RS-2011-63, requests the Davidson County delegation to the Tennessee General Assembly to support legislation to require Metro government authorities and agencies created under state law to 
um, to condition the payment of government funds to contractors doing work in Davidson County upon proof of a valid business tax license issued by the Davidson County Clerk, Council Member Tiger. Committee report, please. Council Member McGuire. Budget and finance at the request of the sponsor voted to defer 15 for none against. Councilman Tiger. I would move to defer at the request of the finance department one meeting. Yes, we have a motion second. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor, please say aye. aye.